I'm still seeing a, a lot of perma bears try and call a top in this market. And um, you know, it, we're just, we're in the second phase of a bubble. So let me show you what's going on. You know, the, this is the semiconductors and I, I told everybody this was going to happen. <clears throat> Once we broke out above this 2000 top, you can see we tested it multiple times in 2008. Then we had a big correction. Then we started to break out of it um, at the end of 2019. And then we get our four-year cycle low. That's the slingshot move. Um, and you can see that's ex exactly what happened. Price just rocketed back out of that. This is the starting, the, the bubble phase. There's still there's many, many perma bears that just for some reason can't understand what is happening. And I, I said uh, that this consolidation, this massive, massive consolidation and breakout was going to produce a huge move. And that's exactly what is happening here. And uh, you know, we, we got into the, uh, the semis here at the last daily cycle low, and we're basically just printing money every day in, the, in this sector. And I think this is still has several months to run. Uh, bubbles um, tend to last a year to, to a little more than a year uh, from the time they start. That's about how long it takes for the general public to all pile in, and then you get the last buyer, and then the bubble pops. And, uh, and make no mistake, we're this is we're in a bubble um, in the stock market. Uh, but the the bottom came in March, so I wouldn't expect a top before March of next year. So we we've, we've probably still got three to four months to go. So this, even though this looks extreme now, I think it's going to be much more extreme before this is over. I mean, we um, have a recent example of a bubble in in Bitcoin that just you know went from 7,000 to 20,000 in a, in a matter of months and uh, um, I don't expect this bubble to be quite that big but uh, uh, I, I do think that we could easily double again uh, in, in this sector in particular so um, you know where we're in we're, we're riding the bubble phase in the semis so now let me move to another sector uh, this this is the small caps, and, and again, um, I told all the subscribers, you know, I, I saw this coming, and I, uh, right before this breakout occurred, I suggested people uh, might want to put some money also in uh, small caps. We've got a, a breakout from a very long basing pattern, and the small caps are starting to go vertical as well. And, uh, you know, realistically central banks are just printing insane amounts of money it's it's got to land somewhere and that every time they've done it in the past it's created a bubble and it's doing it again so you know you don't want to fight uh fight the the bubble in in these markets you don't want to fight uh, the central bank created bubbles you want to ride them uh and um when when the bubble in the stock market pops, then liquidity is is going to uh, start to flow into undervalued areas, and that is of course commodities. So um, this is the chart of the CRB. Uh, I'm going to point this out. This is a three-year cycle low right here. We have another one here, uh, another three-year cycle low here, and then we the the last three-year cycle low was right here. Um, I'm very confident that this is a final bear market bottom. The bear market started with the, the bubble in energy uh, and um, commodities have been in a, in a bear market since uh, topping in 2008. I think that bear market is over. So um, at some point next year, probably spring of next year, the, the bubble in the commodity markets will, will pop and liquidity will uh, come out of uh, those markets and uh, and I can guarantee you central banks will uh, start to print even more money and uh, and that liquidity is is going to flow into commodities and uh, and I think it's already started so we we've, we've already got some positions uh, in energy in particular the energy sector is, has been beaten down uh, as bad if not worse than than some of the uh, precious metal mining stocks so this is this is a sector I particularly like is oil service. Um, 
the, the energy sector has just been uh, beaten to death over the last uh, 10 years, and, and especially uh, the oil service stocks uh, have just been crushed. And, uh, and I, I believe we're going to have, you know, at least a five to six year bull market in commodities. And, uh, and it's just now starting. And we got into, uh, well, I suggested people start buying um, uh, energy stocks and oil service stocks a couple weeks ago. So, um, you know, we, we got in like right here at the very beginning of a, of a new bull market that has several years to run, and, and I don't see any reason at all why uh, the oil service sectors can't at least retest these all-time highs during a big bull market, and uh, and we're in, you know, at a, about as close to the, the very bottom as you can get. So there's, there's huge potential in this sector over the next uh, uh, five to six years. So another sector where where we're starting to just print money daily in our in our trades in energy. All right, now I'm going to move on to a chart of well, th this is the CRB in the upper panel, and this is gold in the lower panel. So uh, I'm going to point out here that you know, first off, as I said, I, I think we are starting a new bull market in commodities right here. But look, look who, look what is leading this bull market. Um, the rest of the commodity sector uh, is uh, very depressed and was making you know, lower, lower lows. You know, very low, very depressed prices, and it is just starting a bull market. In the meantime, gold has already broken out to new all-time highs uh, earlier this summer. Gold is leading the bull market in commodities. This is where the uh, really big gains are going to occur in the years ahead. Uh, I, and as I uh, warned at the time, <clears throat> this breakout to new highs was coming too late in the intermediate cycle for it to be sustained. There would be a, a correction. That's what is happening right now. Um, when the correction first started, you know, I warned this would happen. Traders were, um, you know, they had the memory of this huge rally. Uh, in, in the recent past, they were very bullish. They, they wanted to jump on board this uh, rally or, or this correction way too early. Um, I, I warned people that it was, it was going to take some time. And, uh, and that's exactly what's happened. Um, you know, the people that tried to jump on this early, like in, in the first month, well, it's taken four months for this correction to run its course. I think it's probably finished. I think it finished last last week. But <clears throat> so, you know, everybody has now become frustrated. So uh, back here, people were, uh, were um, aggravated that I wouldn't give them the buy signal quickly they, they were you know anticipating a repeat of this huge move they wanted it to happen very quickly uh, I knew it was going to take some time we were going to have to be patient uh, now it's the exact opposite now uh, nobody believes me when I say that the, the, the correction is almost certainly over if not it, it there's not much downside left and and then if you back up and look at the big picture you can see that the Gold is leading this commodity bull market. This is where the huge gains are going to be over the next five years, just like those uh, massive gains that I showed you in the semiconductors. The semiconductors are leading the bull market in stocks. Gold is leading. Precious metals are leading the bull market in commodities. This is the, well, you, you definitely want to be in this sector. I, I think you also want to be, have some positions in energy, because I think there's huge potential in that sector as well as the commodity bull market gets going. But <clears throat> but the, the really huge, massive moves uh, in the next four or five years are going to are going to come in precious metals. And, and we're setting up now this this correction is coming to an end and we're setting up for a another attempt to break out above these all time highs. This was 1923. 
this time the breakout is going to hold and it's going to be sustained and we're we're going to get uh, another leg up in this bull market you could even call this a a cup and you know we're forming the handle to the cup right now uh, i think uh, this next intermediate rally, which should run into at least March and maybe even into May or June, um, is going to, I would say, at least get to 2,500. And, and there's an outside chance it could even get to uh, 3,000 before this intermediate cycle tops. And before this bull market is over, um, we're, we're going to see, I think, at minimum, we're going to see $7,000 gold and probably $10,000 gold. And I made that same prediction with the NASDAQ. I, I said, you know, 10,000 was going to be a piece of cake. And, and I said that, you know, I was saying that way back in 2016 and 2017, nobody believed me. And here we are, you know, breaking out above uh, 12,000 and starting the second phase of uh, the bubble in stocks, just like I predicted. All right, and then we'll end here with the chart of the NASDAQ. You know, I, I told people that this, this was a consolidation. I, I showed them where we had tested the upper range of this consolidation box three times. And I said the, the fourth, fourth or fifth time we were likely to break out and it would be sustained. And that's what's happening right now. So this was your buy point once, once the breakout occurred. <clears throat> Now, we, we are getting a little late in this daily cycle. However, I, I am not at all confident that cycles are going to work during the second phase of a bubble. So we, we may not get a correction in the normal timing band. Um, price can just get into a runaway phase and just keep moving higher and higher as retail traders start to pile into the market and they, they tend to just buy at any price. But uh, if, if we do get a normal move into a daily cycle low, or we're getting mature, we're in that timing band, uh, I suspect what would happen is we're going to come back down and retest the breakout of this consolidation box. That is your last buying opportunity to get in for the second phase of the bubble, if it happens. And there is uh, no guarantee it's going to happen. You, you may, you know, this may just continue to go and you may just have to chase this move. Um, but like I said, Bubbles usually last at least a year, so I don't anticipate a top here until March. And I'm actually anticipating the second half of the bubble is going to be uh, roughly the same magnitude as this first half, which was about 6,000 points. So I'm looking for about uh, five to 6,000 points now that we have started the breakout from this consolidation box.